Satish, it's a pleasure to welcome you. Thank you. Uh, you have inherited a big legacy. I had the distinct privilege of interviewing your dad a few years back when he visited Silicon Valley, a true inspiration for many, many entrepreneurs. Uh, Satish, the space you are in is very competitive, but also very advantageous because India had this unique distinction of positioning itself really well in terms of generic drugs manufacturing. Uh, but it's not, like I said, without challenges, especially when you look at bigger markets in, uh, in the U.S. and Europe. Um, I had asked long time ago to one of the co-discoverers of a drug called Lipitor. Mm -hmm. I said, why does it cost so much to afford a Lipitor? Oh, no, it's very effective. And why can't we, you know, we get the same rates as we get in Mexico or India? And the answer was, well, they spend a billion plus dollars behind each drug mm -hmm. for research. And until it comes to market, it's another two, three hundred million dollars. So but we're talking about a billion and a half. And so we, they need to have a patent on it for the next 10 years or eight years, and then they let it lose. Uh, what is your answer to that? Okay, so this, this is a difficult question, but the most often asked uh, question off late, you know, because of the various controversies. So here's my view, right? So there always has to be a balance between affordability and innovation. Now, in the context of what happens in the US, it's going to be very different from India, right? So here you're looking at this is the hub of innovation. Uh, for the pharmaceutical industry across the world. So if you're saying it's the hub of innovation, there's also the cost of failure to be built in. And uh, there are also challenges for big pharma, right, in terms of what they face. So as part of the business model, I think they would look at everything and pricing becomes a very key issue to them in terms of what it is. So I won't be able to specifically comment on the pricing of a specific product, right? But clearly I would say that, you know, it's like if innovation has to continue, Right? and companies need to spend billions of dollars. Also, it's become a challenge in terms of the number of drugs that are coming into the market. And also the nature of disc uh, discovery has changed. It's become more expensive, it's become more complex, uh, and also very competitive, let me put it that way. So in that situation, you know, when it comes to the farmers pricing their drugs, uh, I think we, frankly, you really have to balance it out between that and the amount they spend. You know, so purely if you were to take it from a healthcare point of view, and then say that they should really price it the lowest, I mean, then it becomes an issue of how does the company then innovate, right? Mm -hmm. So if they don't innovate, then again, you're looking at a deeper problem, right? So because in terms of the innovations that can deliver better health, health outcomes, it is these companies who have the expertise, right? So yeah. So how do Indian so farmers... My, so my view is mixed in this whole thing, you know, yeah. to see how it works. How do Indian farmers then uh, focus on innovation? Because innovation obviously is more economical. I mean, Mars is a great example, you right. know that somebody gave this morning. Uh, I'm sure there are very you know, uh, innovative ways of, of doing this in India itself. Because you look at Gates Foundation, look at the you know, mm -hmm. Clinton Initiative. Right. They do come to India to manufacture the drugs to send it to you know, other countries in Africa and other parts of the world. Right. When we talked about the example that you gave, it's more about you know, the first time discovery of a new class of drugs. Yeah. So I was more hinting at that, sure. saying that that's important to keep innovation alive plus deliver better health outcomes. So I think that's very important. So when it comes to India and also the people who are working there, so one is if you actually see for almost about close to 35 years, right, from 1970 to 2005, we did not have product patents, which necessarily told you that, you know, nobody was into drug discovery at that point of time. So if you see our founder, my father, Dr. Reddy, he took the brave risk knowing fully well that, you know, by 2005, anyway, the patent law is going to come. And in his words, you know, he used to say the feast is going to come to an end, right? That's what he used to say. And let's say, if you have to move the value chain, if you have to be something of a global company, unless you really make it in discovery at some point of time, and the time is to start now, that's, that's why he plunged into it in 1992. And then if you see the journey of drug discovery, say, in an Indian company like ours, that itself tells you the tale, that it's not easy, right? Do you have the capability? Yes, absolutely. So you had three products. You had two of them licensed to Nova Nordisk, one to Novartis, and then you also saw the uncertainty of what happens to those uh, products because one product went all the way up to almost the end of phase three clinical trials, and then it had to be pulled out, right? So, so we, we didn't lose heart in the sense we had to pare down the innovation in terms of the costs, but then we put it in a different business model. We then took it into a subsidiary called Origin and started doing collaborative research. So it has a, it has a revenue model, so it's not a strain in terms of the R&D spend. But at the same time, we still continue to innovate. So it's more in the space of oncology at this point of time. So that continues. The other things that you were talking about in terms of Bill Gates Foundation and all that is, is more to do with certain tropical diseases. 
you know, in, in, in countries, uh, which would be very much, you know, neglected kind of diseases. And then what can they do to, uh, you know, uh, make them more affordable? I think that's, that's what they're looking at. So it's a different... Uh, so uh, the point I was trying to make with that question was affordability. Uh, so I take my personal example. Uh, my wife needed a, a combination of drugs. Mm -hmm. And it was not available as a pill form here. Right. So it had to be, you know, made by the pharmacy and it was obviously um, a lot more expensive. expensive yeah. So I felt, you know, let me look it up on the internet and find. So there was some available in Mexico. Mm -hmm. and to my surprise, it was abundantly available in India, yeah. regular yeah. drug drug stores. Sure. So I called one of the stores. Sure. I'm from the same city that you come from. Right. And I called and he said, yeah, it's available. And the cost was five, five, five rupees. Absolutely. So th that, that's again a different uh, one. So here what happens is you're talking about a combination of two drugs which are off patent. Right. So India has several of them. Right now, let me also tell you it's in a controversy because, you know, the government used uh, this, this whole issue of policy making, right? So um, if it becomes arbitrary and without a defined process, I think this is one of the uh, pitfalls of this. India has a lot of combinations, right? Because in terms of uh, most of the companies, they have uh, figured out a way, you know, to improve compliance of most of the patients to combine two existing drugs and provided there are no drug to drug interactions, plus there's efficacy of the product, they managed to get the approval and then move on. Uh, you know. So we have, we have a history of this combination drugs in India, right? Right now the problem is there is an issue of some irrational combinations also. That's, that's one thing which the government has rightly identified. And in the whole process, you know, they ended up uh, removing a lot of drugs. Anyway, that's a different matter. But just to get to the point of saying that these combination drugs, this has been a practice being done in India for a very long time with the need coming in from the doctors themselves, you know, to say that, can we combine these two drugs? And the pharmaceutical companies would then work on the idea, look at the technology, put it together, prove the efficacy, and then get to the market. So it's a completely different one. Satish, I'm now coming back to the familial side of business. Uh, it's a very rewarding and very challenging. Uh, so there are, at least I know of two big business schools who have special focus on running family businesses because the transition is a big challenge. It is. Mm -hmm. um, how do you relate your experience to the transition part? So, us has been a very pleasant experience, let me put it that way, you know, compared to, you know, what I've also read about, you know, what happens in most of the business families. So, I think, see, clearly what it involves is, you know, it's like how aligned are people to the vision of the founder. I think everything starts with that, right, because if you then are able to put yourself aligned to that vision and wedded to it in terms of the purpose, and that serves the company interest, I think how the job is done. In most of the cases, it, it all depends on people wanting to do things very differently from what somebody was doing, not aligned to the purpose of what the company was, and not staying true to what, what you believe is, is, is the core essence of the company. So that's, that's one part of it which worked really well, because the vision which you know, Dr. Reddy faint, painted out, uh, you know, for all uh, of us, uh, is, is, is something which was so appealing, inspiring, that it was just natural to be aligned with it and also make sure that, you know, you're able to take it to the rest of the uh, people in the organization. That's number one. Second thing, which also class, in classic cases, right, so the question is when to let go from the patriarch, from the founder. I think my father was an extraordinary individual in that, you know, because in a very early stage, uh, you know, young people like me and Prasad, uh, you know, who were uh, running the company, he pretty much left the operations to us, right? While he was focused on the bigger picture, he left most of the decisions to be made by us. And letting go, I think, is a crucial thing, which a lot of people fail, yeah. And finally then, uh, as a, a leader running the company, uh, obviously you want to excel and, and reach greater heights than where your father left it. Uh, at one stage, you feel that, you know, well, legacy is important to maintain, but then you have to, obviously, keep going forward. Right. Oh, what is your ambition in terms of taking your company forward? Clearly, I think the path is laid out, right? So even the issue of, you know, it's like when things don't work out, right? The question is, is everybody on the same page to make sure that you know, we agree to it? Because it, it was, let me put it this way, quite a difficult decision to say that you would shut down a discovery center in Atlanta, right? And then taking this to the founder and saying that, you know, sorry, we can't sustain this anymore. But I think he understood the situation in terms of the business. He understood in terms of you know, where the company wants to go. So we actually took the decision. But having taken the decision, then then, then becomes the burden on us to see how we can take the company forward 
again using the essence of the company, which is really strong scientific capability and uh, technological capabilities to see how we can take it to the next level. So that's where we actually formed this proprietary products uh, group, which ended up moving towards more of specialty generics, which, uh, you know, again, used a very unique way of getting products into the market. Like two of them are currently in the market launched about uh, two quarters ago. And this is how it gets into the next stage of the value chain. And then we also kept the discovery dream alive, right? But through a different business model. That, that's why I talked about the subsidiary model. So if you see in terms of where the company is today, huge revenues coming in, huge part of the revenues coming from generics at this point of time, specialty generics gaining traction. There's also a big chunk of the biosimilars opportunity waiting to uh, you know, unfold. So that's, that's where the company is going. If you see the future, I think it'll be more of, you know, more of higher end uh, products you know, US being the significant market and completely moving up the value chain. That's that's what the company is about. All right. Wishing you the very best and thank you for the opportunity. Sure. Thank All you. Right. Thank you.